Angela Fragrant. Today I'm going to be going over some of my favorite almond perfumes. These are fragrances where the almond note is one of the more dominant notes in the fragrance. Um, I'm focusing mostly on designer and niche fragrances and I'm not mentioning any indie perfume houses. I have a ton of indie scents that I love that have almond notes in it but when I started preparing for this video it just started to get, I have a feeling it's going to be quite long because almond is one of my favorite notes. So in this one I'm just going to be focusing on designer and niche. Um, the almond note in perfumes is something that comes across usually as creamy, warm, and nutty. And it's, like I said, one of my favorite ones. And I just find it's so comforting. And almond can be done in so many different ways. And I will kind of go over a bunch of different ones because I do have not just that gourmand sweet one um, uh, kind of scent. So to start off with, um, this is a holy grail almond fragrance. Now, full disclosure, this is not my bottle. This is actually my grandma's. Um, it is one of the newer ones, and this is Hypnotic Poison by Christian Dior. It was released in 1998, and it's been a top seller ever since. It's an oriental vanilla, and I believe it, in the past, people have said the longevity of this fragrance was very long-lasting, but this one here that my grandma received, and I have worn it a few times from her um, perfume as well. Um, it's just not that long lasting anymore. So the top notes for this one are apricot, plum, coconut, middle notes of tuberose, jasmine, lily of the valley, and uh, sorry, rose, rosewood, and caraway, and base notes of sandalwood, almond, vanilla, and musk. This is definitely an almond heavy scent. Um, and as I said, since it's been reformulated, I don't find it that long lasting. It is a classic though, and I find that it is a gateway into almond scents. And if you like this one, I have some great other suggestions for you. So moving on, one of my favorite fragrances, I would say probably one of my top 10 favorites in my collection is Confetto by Perfumum Roma. This was actually released in 1996, so it's two years before Hypnotic Poison, um, but many people actually consider this a dupe, which I find it interesting, but... Um, this is actually much more expensive than Hypnotic Poison, and I much prefer this one. So if you like Hypnotic Poison and you want to step up into a niche fragrance, Confetto is definitely a great scent to check out. Um, the notes are quite linear. They're almond, vanilla, anise, musk, and amber. The difference with this one is that it is very long lasting. I get like probably 12 hours of wear. If you spray a scarf, you're going to smell it the next day. Um, I have used the scent a lot, but I've also decanted a bit um, for some friends and everyone loves this scent. Like I've gotten compliments while wearing it. I've had um, some people come up to me and be like, oh my God, what perfume are you wearing? Um, this, it definitely projects. It's probably got moderate projection. If you spray a lot of it, it could go on the heavier side. And it's absolutely a beautiful scent. It's like sugared almond cookies. And I definitely think it's worth the price. A little goes a long way and the presentation is absolutely wonderful. I do have a video of this on my channel. I find my bottle now that um, the liquid has kind of gotten a little bit darker. I've had this for a number of years and that is kind of happens to some vanilla scents over time. It still smells fantastic um, and it's so easy to wear in cooler weather. It's like you could wear it, um, you know, to work, to on date nights, to parties. It's just like an amazing overall almond scent and probably one of my top suggestions in this video. And now we're actually going further further back to 1989. This is Helotrope Etro, um, and it is an oriental floral. Uh, this is marketed as unisex. It's got top notes of almond, pedigrain, bergamot, and orange blossom, middle notes of iris, jasmine, helotrope, alang alang, and rose, and base notes of tulu balsam, tonka bean, musk, vanilla, 
and Peru Balsam. It's got lots of notes, but I find it's a very simple scent. It's definitely heavy almond and helotrope vanilla. Um, it's got moderate longevity and softer to moderate projection. This is a very calming and a sweet scent. I definitely enjoy this scent in my collection. I love purple florals, so I love the helotrope in this. Um, it's very cozy, and I actually find that I wear this um, before bed. I find it very calming. Um, it doesn't last, last as long as Confetto, so if I want like a really long-lasting almond scent, I'll go with that one. But I really enjoy this one, and it's been out for a really long time, but um, it's actually, I believe I got it in the last year, so it's a newer acquisition for me. Um, but I do quite enjoy this, and if you like almond and helotrope, I highly recommend giving this one a chance. Um, moving along... <clears throat> The last three were kind of more gourmandish, and this one to me is not a gourmand. This is Mandorlo de Sicilia by Aqua de Parma. This was from 1999, and it's an oriental floral unisex scent. Um, uh, this fragrance has been suggested a lot on summer videos. Like, I've seen a lot of YouTubers, and I believe I had it in one of my summer uh, recommendation videos. It's, it's not very gourmand almond and it's not sweet but it's definitely got that almond note in it um, which I think makes it quite unisex. The top notes are almond, bergamot, star anise, orange, middle notes of ylang ylang, peach, jasmine and bottom notes of vanilla, um, balsam, musk and cedar. Um, so I actually like to wear this scent not only in the summertime but also to the gym. Um, I love almond notes and I find it's, I've actually worn quite a bit of it already because um, there's like a dent in the liquid. For me that's a lot because I have so many fragrances. Um, I find it's long lasting with moderate projection. Um, I find it's a very inoffensive scent. It kind of goes along with everything like it's a good daytime scent. Um, in warmer weather it works really well and when you sweat it works so um, I do like to wear this one to the gym and I don't find it too overwhelming so that is Mandorlo de Sicilia by Aqua de Parma and one of my newer acquisitions very new actually is Jasmine's uh, Jasmine Marzipan and this is by Maison Lancome and what a gorgeous bottle this is it's got like a <clears throat> gold kind of like uh, design of jasmine flowers and there it is by Maison Lancome and it's one of their exclusives. So this one here, I mean it's got marzipan in the name, it's kind of obvious it's going to have almond. Um, it's a 2016 release so we're jumping a bit forward now. It's got jasmine, almond, vanilla, musk, cashmere and sandalwood. It's long lasting with moderate to heavy projection. I have not worn this in winter yet. Um, and I kept thinking that this would be more for cooler weather, yet the least amount of votes on Fragrantica were for winter. And most people, I believe, voted for like spring, summer, and fall. So that kind of surprised me because I, I personally find this a bit too much for a really high heat. Um, I think this would make a wonderful signature scent for someone too, though. And it seems like a lot of people thought that it would be like day appropriate. Um, it's just a beautiful floral almond scent and the almond is definitely a dominant note in this one. And next we have, um, <clears throat> This is Caswell Massey, and it's Centuries Almond Eau de Toilette. I only have a sample, and I've only worn this once. Um, it's a, it's based off of like an almond oil. This was actually released in 2017, but I believe it's based off of a scent that's been, you know, around for a long time. It's got linear notes, almond, sea salt, Tonka cherries and musk just like a hint of cherries though. It's an everyday almond It's clean and soapy with just like the touch of gourmand But with this with the clean kind of aspect of it I find it's almost like a really high quality body lotion or cream like a luxurious cream And you kind of get this almond oil scent off of it. It's got moderate projection um, I haven't really tested the longevity of this one yet. I've only had, you know, a sample and I've only tested it once, but a couple others voted on Fragrantica and it was all over the place. Uh, one person said weak, one person said very long lasting. Um, 
So I'm not too sure about the longevity of this one, but this is going to go onto my wish list because I really like this scent. And I'm not sure, I believe it's unisex because I could totally see this being a unisex um, scent. And that is Centuries Almond. And next we have one that I've had for a really long time and that's Almond Coconut by Laura Mercier. This was released in 2006. This might have been actually my second bottle of this. I believe I had it as a signature scent for a while. Um, and it's a very gourmand scent, a very sweet edible scent. It's got coconut, almond, vanilla, tonka, rosewood, holotrope, musk, alang alang, jasmine, and rosemary. But really I find there's only three dominant notes in this and that is almond, coconut, and vanilla. It's moderate to long-lasting with moderate projection. Um, I've had this for years now, maybe six years or something, and it smells great in the bottle, but I find when I wear it, I almost wonder if it's gone off a bit for me, this bottle, so I don't reach for it really much anymore. But it is an incredible almond scent, and if you want a bit of coconut in there, this is a fantastic um, scent to check out. Um, another one I have here is Lost Cherry by Tom Ford. And it's really like when, while I'm filming this right now, it's actually quite warm and it's hard to talk about all these like really warm and cozy scents that I like to wear in wintertime because I'm absolutely like overheated myself right now. <laughs> um, but this is Lost Cherry by Tom Ford. I've talked about this on my channel before. It was released in November of 2018. It's got top notes of cherry, cherry liqueur and almond, middle notes of Turkish rose, jasmine, and bottom notes of tonka, peru balsam, sandalwood, vetiver, and cedar. This is a boozy cherry drink with almond. It's gourmand. It's a party scent. It smells like a drink. It's very edible and very sexy. Um, I find it's like I love the combo of cherry and almond um, in not only desserts but in scents as well and I just found this is done so well in Lost Cherry by Tom Ford and I found I was actually reaching for it quite a bit in the cooler months. Since it's gotten warm I have not actually worn it. I found maybe in like at night time but I just find that it's really good for kind of cooler weather um, in my point of view. It's got moderate longevity and moderate projection, um, but I, I'm not remembering the longevity as much because I haven't worn it for a while, but um, that's what I got off of Fragrant again. Unfortunately, I hadn't made a note of this one's longevity when I did wear it in the past. Um, so once again, Love Lost Cherry by Tom Ford. There's another scent that if you like cherry and almond, there is um, Prada. Let me just grab this one is um, Prada Candy Gloss and it is a cherry almond vanilla musk fragrance with some helotrope, peach, benzoin, cassis and orange blossom and rose. It's got moderate um, projection and I'd say moderate longevity. It is a fun and playful scent, more of a daytime scent and not as not for like heavy cool weather like the lost cherry but if you like almond and cherry this is another great one to um test out i love the opaque pink bottle um i have reviewed this on my channel before too and just like a great overall scent so now i have if i can find the little sample <clears throat> unfortunately I don't have a full bottle of this it's been on my list for a while this is Orgasmo by Hild Soliani. Um, I got this sample from Lucky Scent. As you can see, it's completely gone. I rarely use up an entire sample, but um, this is really this was released in 2013, and it's basically amaretto and almond, and I love it. It's very almondy and very amaretto, and it's just like a sweet drink. It's on my to buy list currently, um, which seems to be ever growing. Um, it's long lasting with moderate projection and I get the name. It's a very sexy scent. 
Um, so I definitely um, like Orgasmo. And if you like Amaretto or like the smell of it, then this is basically that in um, perfume form. I've had some other samples that I wanted to talk about, but I realized I had given them away already. So like Tonka Imperial by Guerlain. Um, to me, that one leaned more masculine with the tobacco. So I, I did give away my uh, sample. Um, now I also have here, let's get another one, um, Sticky Cake by Comme des Garçons, and this is from the Series 7 Suite. Um, and this is, so this was released back in 2005, but I believe it was 2017 when they came out with these newer white bottles. So if you look it up on Fragrantica, the bottle actually looks quite different from what it does now. It has top notes of almond, honey, and pistachio, middle notes of iris, and bottom notes of milk, sugar, and myrrh. And it is an iris and almond, almond combo. It's like, sorry, it's floral almond combo. It's, I love purple florals, so the iris in this just like made it another love for me. Um, and it's got moderate longevity and moderate projection. It's a fun and easy scent. It's like a cute bottle. Uh, I would, like to me, this reminds me of a European bakery with marble floors where you get like an almond marzipan croissant with pistachio nuts kind of sprinkled on top. And you know, you can't wait to get home to eat the croissant. So you're opening it up as you leave this beautiful bakery and outside are these like iris florals planted. And that's just the like image I get from Sticky Cake. It is definitely like a almond marzipan croissant. Um, I find it kind of like a simple baked almond gourmand. Um, and to be honest, between this and the confetto, I actually reach for confetto more often. I find the longevity is just so much better on confetto. So if I want to have a long lasting almond, I usually reach for that one. But this one still is a very great almond and fun scent. So I do love having it in my collection. And another almond. So I have two kind of bottles. They look a little different. I have the mini and then the full size. And this is Terra de, L de Lumiere. And these ones are the original. And these with the kind of gold specks in the uh, bottle cap is the gold edition. And they have the same notes, I believe, but they're a little bit different, it says on Fragrantica. To me, they see, smell quite similar. Um, so the... Uh, I believe the, this edition has like honey, almond, tonka, lavender, uh, musk mallow, uh, cassis, musk, pink pepper, and bergamot. And this one has the same notes, but this one I think has almond more of a dominant note, and this one al almonds more of like the third or fourth note mentioned. Um, but I definitely get almond in both, and definitely honey. And so it's kind of a different take on almond with the honey. Um, it's got moderate longevity, soft projection, I believe on both. I've only worn this one once as just kind of like a sample, but I have worn this one a couple times. And it's like a good quality almond oil that's like warmed on your skin with some sweet honey. Um, I find it a sexy scent, more of a daytime scent though. Um, I personally would love wearing this in the summertime. Um, and, but maybe not in extreme heat, but I think the honey and almond really go well in kind of all seasons. It was voted mostly for fall, actually. So it seems like most people would wear this one for fall. Um, definitely, um, I like this one, Terre de, Lu de Lumiere by L'Occitane. Just note that there are different bottle caps. Um, I kept thinking it was the same one for the longest time, but then Fragrantica is telling me it's different. So um, I guess it is a little bit different. And those are all my almond suggestions. I kind of went through the video a little quickly, probably talked too fast just to get them all in. It's probably going to be a long video as it is. Um, so there's like a lot. I have, I've always loved almond. And so one of my like this, this is definitely one of my favorite notes. So definitely one of my favorite, like I have a lot of fragrances that have almond. I have a lot more fragrances that have almond notes in it, surprisingly, but they're not the dominant note. And I kind of wanted to just focus on the fragrances that it was, um, 
it was like a dominant note. I didn't want to talk about the ones where, you know, Almond was listed as like the, you know, fifth or sixth note. So let me know down below, do you like Almond notes in your fragrances? And what are your favorite Almond note perfumes? I'm always up for trying out some new ones. So thank you so much for watching. Until next time.